Okay, let's move on to some examples of permaculture design in a humid landscape. You may have heard about the key point and its importance in permaculture water system. In very simplistic terms, it's where contours start to spread and where the hill transitions from convex to concave. And water harvesting systems are often recommended to be carried out below the key point because the areas above it are more erosive. So the key point helps decide where to start collecting water, but also suggests where to consider planting a forest. So the land above the key point should be forested and the land below the key point can be used for things like growing crops, having orchards or creating pasture areas. So now imagine the forest on this land starts at the highest point and goes down to the key point. So forested area is creating a thermal belt and it has a very nice feature. So frost moves across the top of the ridge and sometimes rolls downhill. So frost moves over the trees, pushing warmer air down between the frost above the key point and the valley floor below. So there is a thermal belt. This warm area just below the key point is where people might choose to live. It's a great place to start early in spring. It's also the last area in autumn where plants are productive. So it has a long growing season. If you walk on a cold night from key point to the higher areas, you will feel the temperature drop. But with a forest above the key line, even in the snow, there is a warm flow of air within this thermal belt. If this hill happens to be facing equator, you gain even more warmth during the sunny days, vastly extending the gardening season. So it's a very good idea to dedicate a space for these water systems at key point. Now let's move on to the lower slopes. As the grade decreases, the amount of water stored per soil moved starts to increase. This means that your first dam at key point won't be big, but it's often critical to install for irrigation downhill. Any earth storages we make lower down are very cheap. That is, the flatter the floor that we are flooding, the more water we get for money spent. It doesn't matter where that is, uh, on an open field or on a ridge or in the valley floor, so when we are looking to large storage, we walk the valley floor and find where it levels. We can come back to our observation principle and notice when it rains. Where the water speeds up, that is where we, where we are going to have to move a lot more soil. Where it's moving slowly, that could be a floor of our pond. Where it starts to speed up, that is where our dam wall will go. Now I want to show you a photo taken a year ago. We got this big snow event, half a meter, about two feet in 24 hours. After a few days, when the snow started melting, you could see these lines of water movement. This perfectly shows the shape of our landscape without looking at the contour map. So water moves at 90 degree angle to contour lines. So the imaginary lines perpendicular to these water lines are our contours. Isn't that great? So what I did last year, I double checked if we positioned our water harvesting features correctly in the landscape. So if the water lines hit our swales and pond at 90 degree angle, that meant we did okay. 